I know you've been working with square roots for a while now, but let's back up for a little bit and pretend that we're just starting out with square roots for the first time, that we don't know much about them. All we know is the Pythagorean theorem, that the square of the longest side in the right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So I look at this little right triangle here. Each side has a length of 1, and so I want to find the length of this hypotenuse right here using the Pythagorean theorem. So I think I'll call this length right here x, and so what we have is this, x squared must be equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared by the Pythagorean theorem. That means that x squared is equal to 1 plus 1, because 1 squared is just 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so x squared is equal to 2. Now, here's the problem. There's no, there's no fraction and there's no decimal whose square is equal to 2. No matter how hard I try, I can't find a fraction or a decimal that I can square to get 2. If you think you know one, write it down, square it, and see what happens. You might get close to 2, but you'll never get exactly 2. But I can see that here I have a line segment, right, that's going to have that length, whatever that length is, whatever numbers associated with it, when I square it, I have to get 2. So I'm going to make up new notation for that number whose square is 2, and that notation looks like this. x is the square root of 2. That's the notation I use to represent the number whose square is 2. And I only do that. I would only use new notation here if there was no old notation I could use. And there's no fraction and no decimal whose square is 2. Two's an, uh, square root 2 is an irrational number. So that tells me that the length of this hypotenuse right here is going to be square root 2. Now, what I want to do is I want to add another line segment onto this end of this hypotenuse at a right angle, and I want to make its length equal to 1 also. So I'm going to do that. So I have a little graph paper here that I've made up to use as a ruler. There's four squares per inch, and um, or I'm going to say there's four squares per inch. So one unit on here is going to be four squares, and all the lines meet each other at right angles. So if I simply line this up so that one of these straight lines right here is right along that hypotenuse, then all I have to do is go out to that point and move one, two, three, four units. And what I have is a line segment of length one that meets that hypotenuse at a right angle. Now the question is, what's the length of this diagonal? So when I draw this diagonal in right here, what's going to be the length of that hypotenuse in this right triangle? So I'm going to do the same thing that I just did. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's call it x. And so whatever x is, x squared is going to be equal to this side squared. So square root 2 squared plus 1 squared. Okay. Well, square root 2, here's a number I don't know much about because I just made up this notation down here. As a matter of fact, I really only know one thing about this number right here, and that is if I square it, I end up with 2. Well, look, I'm squaring it right here, so I must get 2. So x squared is equal to 2 plus 1 squared, which is 1. x squared is equal to 3. Now, I have the same problem I just had. There's no... Um, fraction and there's no decimal whose square is 3, so I have to use my not new notation. x is square root of 3. That's how I write it. And that stands for the number who, the positive number whose square is 3. So I'm going to fill this in now with 3 square root. That's the length of that hypotenuse. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing again. On the end of this hypotenuse right here, I want to add a line segment at a right angle whose length is 1. So I'll line this up again, right along one of these lines, so I know I'm going to get a right angle there, and then I'll just move out 1, 2, 3, 4 units, and that's what I'm ca calling one unit right here. So that's 1, and now the question is, what is the length of this hypotenuse in this new right triangle right here. Well, I'll do the same thing I just did, and I'll call it x. And so I have this. x squared is equal to this length right here, which is square root 3, with my new notation, squared, plus this length, which is 1, squared. So x squared is equal to 
Again, I don't know much about this number. In fact, the only thing I do know about it is that if I square it, I get 3. So that's 3 plus 1. x squared is equal to 4. And now I have a number that I can square and get 4, and that number is 2. So x is equal to 2. But I could also use my new notation and write this down. So for this number right here, I could write square root 4 or just 2. Okay, let's do it one more time. On to the end of this diagonal right here, I want to add a line segment of length 1 that meets that hypotenuse at a right angle. So I'll line up that line, and then I'll just move out 1, 2, 3, 4 units. I know that this is 1 right here. So what is the length of this diagonal? Right here. So what do you think that length is going to be? Using our little inductive reasoning, we can guess that that's going to be square root 5. Let's try it and see. This, I'll call it x. So x squared is equal to this length right here, which is 2 squared, plus this length right here, which is 1 squared. x squared is equal to 4 plus 1 x squared is equal to 5, and 5 is another one of those numbers that doesn't have a number, a fraction, or a decimal to square to get it. So I use my new notation, x is equal to square root 5. So here you can see I've got this spiral moving out, and each one of these diagonals turns out to be the square root of one of the counting numbers like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over and get a few more pens for some different colors and kind of finish this out right here and then come back and show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. Okay, so if I continue what I'm doing and just keep going like this, what I end up with is this nice spiral which actually just keeps going forever and ever and has diagonals or little spokes here, you might say, that are the square roots of all the counting numbers. What I like about this is it gives us a way to visualize all these irrational numbers. I mean, at first, when we come across irrational numbers, it seems kind of odd that there's no fraction or decimal to square to get them. But that turns out to be true, and that's why we have to use this new notation, this square root notation, to represent the number whose square is 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. Um, because you can see that there are line segments that have those lengths, so we need a number to associate with those lengths but there's no fraction or decimal that will square to get these things, so we make up this new notation. But this is a very attractive spiral right here. I think you can see that it looks maybe like one of those chamber nautilus things that you see in nature, something like that. It's kind of fun to take this and expand it out and see how it wraps around and just keeps going. But in any case, there's a look at the Pythagorean theorem and a way we can use it to visualize um, a lot of the irrational numbers that we work with.